What's going on, my gamers and balls? Once again, we have another episode of Shots Fired with your man, Vince Chang, a.k.a. The Energy. And, man, we got a good one today. I want to shout out to everybody that's been tuning into the World Cup. As you know, the FIBA World Cup is literally a couple of days away. Who is going to be the creme de la creme, the top of the world when it comes to basketball? The game that you, me, and everyone here loves. And I'm telling you, I don't know because now I'm researching these countries. And I got to admit, when you look in the NBA... Not everybody's American. Let's just say that right now. We got a lot of good players from different countries, and I can't wait to shout them all out. All right, we're going to shout out, first of all, our talent overload. We got some people from Nigeria, and there's someone called the Niger. This man is amazing. Abidium Adegoke, this dude is one of the tallest basketball players you've ever seen. We're going to shout him out real quick, have a nice highlight for him. Next, as you already know, with the talent overload after that, we got the breaking news, and the FIBA World Cup is underway, and things that are happening are incredible. I can't wait for this tournament to get on through because whoo, there's gonna be a lot of talent then we have a special guest i'm so excited to have this queen on this fantastic program of shots fired look keisha sutton harlem gold trial also played at south carolina gamecocks with the one and only dawn staley i am going to pick her brain she is also the fan favorite there's a reason why they call the fan favorite and we're going to break that down and also to keep going the bahamas got a squad yo Got a squad. I can't wait to dissect that. And also, e FIBA Season 2 is underway. They announced the countries. I don't even know exactly sure who they got, but I'm telling you, it's going to be more exciting than last year because it's going to be an offline event. That means we're going to be there watching people play NBA 2K24. Oh, yeah. And lastly, you know, Worldwide Court, we're going to you know a special shot the top five countries in the World Cup, which is awesome. So let's go everywhere. Let's see my people on Twitch. Let's see my people on there. Who's in the chat? What's going on? My people on YouTube was also, I got to make sure I got to say hi to them right there. What's going on? We got some people watching. All right, we here, we here, we here. Got to make some stuff because I want to make sure we're nice and cool. All right, but anyway, like I, and also shout out where you're from. You get this a live shout out. Actually, this is a live show. We like to chill, we have a good time. Any questions, let me know. Any opinions, we got to keep it going. And right, we're in episode 25. We got 32 episodes in our contract. It's only a few more episodes left. But I want to appreciate everyone who's supporting the show, people who've been watching repeatedly on YouTube and people who've been on and TikTok. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been an honor just to be a part of you guys and just have some fun. All right, without further ado, let's get the show going. This is Shots Fired, episode 25 with your man Vince Chang. Let's go. All right, as you know, talent overload is that we like to go all around the social media and find who's been killing it in the basketball community. And I'm pretty sure you've seen this man. Bring him up for me, Sasha, because this guy is known as Big Naja, which I had to look that up. Naja means Nigerian, which is basically a suggestion, an adjective of Nigerian of all things Nigerian. And it's just basically from the country. And this man is insane. Abidion Adegoke, all right? He stands at 2.36 meters. That's seven foot nine. You do know a rim is only about 10 feet right it's only about 10 feet they were cons i did some research too they were considering making the rim 12 feet in 2008 but then decided not to and you can see why this dude is a monster i mean he's notable for being one of the tallest basketball players alongside Song ming ming and if you know about something, he's basically about the same foot uh, as this big guy, and but a little more athletic. But Kajabi says that he is 17 years old. That this big behemoth is 17 years old. But some things are going back and forth, and he could be 23 or 24. And, you know, when you're in Africa, different countries, sometimes your birth certificate gets lost. You don't know where it is, so I ain't got no question for that. But this dude can ball, actually. I'm always curious of big fellas like this when it came to, like, your health and stuff like that. But the one thing I do know is that he plays in actually a pretty dope league. Plays with the MPAC, uh, basically the MPAC which was founded in Chicago, Illinois, in 2002 by Alukman Rashad. Now, in Chicago, home of basketball, as you know, in the United States, but I think New York is the mecca, but hey, we can just go back and forth about that. And it was a stomping ground of who? You know, Michael Jordan and Chicago Bulls. But the impact launched in the Gulf region in 2007, and it trains over 10,000 kids annually. The impact sports has established the most unique basketball and athlete development framework in the MENA region, the MENA region. The flagship is actually in Dubai. The Dubai Basketball School proves a unique 
unique opportunities for dedicated student athletes trained with certified international coaches from the USA and around the globe. Their objective is to develop the infrastructure for sports by promoting the game and on the grassroots level and building elite athletes who will compete at the highest level of the game through quality instruction and structure competitions. And the FX Sports has picked players that never settled and also stand for more. But again, this man right here, Mr. Niger, is actually one of the faces of this program. And as you see, he's not jumping. He's literally just like, as you trying to get something on top of a fridge. He can also palm the ball with two fingers. With two fingers. Look, my mother, my mother Jamaican, she's the two fingers around your lips. He can do that with a basketball. Look at it. There's a magic player. He's going like, mm, that's mine. Mm, that's mine. He picking up like it's a cookie. Again, it's hard to defend a man that doesn't jump at all and can dunk. As you see, the Empire basketball, and he's a good sponsor for it. I don't know how he finds shoes because also look up. His shoe size is pretty big. He's like an 18 to 19, but like a 53 in the UI, even trying to 50. That's a big foot right there. That's a big foot. That's a boat. Okay, this man can walk on water. He could be the next Jesus. But I have to admit, he's such a local guy. You can watch him all on YouTube and follow him on all his social media and again it is the big naja which again b-i-g and a-i-j-a -A, and he's just such a dope person shout out to you know blender hendy and all of them and we had some great production as you see oh shout out there and also we have a new ending has a thing spray paint and look shelly ah yes but yeah the big naja is one of the nigerian balls that we are also going to talk about because when it comes to the world cup we are discovering different players from around the world okay Basketball is not at the top of America anymore. There's a lot of countries that we have not even scratched the surface of the talent that could be born there. They just need some good coaches, some good infrastructure, and also great facilities. You know, they got dirt roads. I mean, we had, you know, Kennedy the other day, um, you know, he's dope in Africa, and, you know, he's just using, like, balls he makes up and creates his own gym. Now he's just one of them people, too. If we can give him the resources, we can get him up the States. And cool, like, there was a movie with um, Kevin Bacon called The Air Up There got the, 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 the kid's name, but he came to the States. Yo, Africans can ball. They can ball. And I can't wait to see what's going on in the World Cup. Because there's other teams that we can just dissect. But anyway, that's the first segment right here in Shots Fired. Let's see my people on YouTube. What's up? All right. How you feeling? And also my people on Twitch. Yo, thank you so much, Young12, for the follow. A Life Voyager for the follow. And Gary023 uh, for a follow. If you're back in the chat, thank you guys so much for the love. I mean, right now we're finally at 25,000 followers. Thank you so much. Our goal is to get to 50,000. Yeah, we're trying to double that. But with the World Cup, I think we're going to do it. All right. That was Talent Overload. But now we got breaking news. And this is actually pretty interesting because, man, oh, man, the World Cup is here. And let's see how people are prepping. Anyway, right here, breaking news on Shots Fire. Let's go. All right, as you see, FIBA World Cup is in perspiration. A uh, press perspiration. I said perspiration. Perspiration. Presper preparation. Vince, enunciate. Put the put the, put the, put the video up. All right. Right. As you see, World Cup preparation games are in full flow now. And now we're going to go through some headlines and big performances. And if you want to check it out, you can definitely go to more detail on FIBA World Cup Tracker on the official website, FIBA.com. Definitely check it out. Team by team breakdown results, top performances, and a super important and some must visit. So go, go, go. Now let's start with the big boys. All right. Team USA has taken part in three warm-ups so far. One in Las Vegas and blew away Puerto Rico, 117 to 74. And man, oh man, it's been Anthony Edwards leading the way with 15 points and four steals. And then they flew to Spain. Hola. Como estas? To face Slovenia and, of course, the Spaniards. Another two wins were recorded, 92 to 62, against a Lucales Slovenia. Lucales. And also, uh, 98 88 against Spain, and which you gotta be careful of that because at the end of the day, Luca is a problem. Now, with 15 points and uh, 21 respectively, two people that was doing a lot of work was that those guys right there, Anthony Edwards and also the one and only Jalen Brutson. And basically, in those games, they were killed with 15 and 21 points respectively each after the early scrimmage losses to Team USA, the select team. We talked about that, how the young pups were showing the big pups and stuff, but the senior side started to keep rolling and now they keep going for the World Cup. Now, it's kind of cool. Why Watch Anthony Edwards, Kermit Witts, and also Juancho Harmonicas from Bo Jackson. But anyway, as you see right here, Juancho from um, uh, Henry Gomez, I forget it, also Bo, on that beautiful Spain team, and Santi Aldama, that Aldama, standing with those two contests on that fantastic Spanish team. But Canada was also insane, with also with the one and only RJ Barrett, which is another thing glowing in because RJ Barrett is coming in clutch for a win, for winning knockdown 31 points. This guy knocked down 31 points. This is crazy. I mean, 
Ken ended up beating the Germans to 113 to 12, which was insane. We didn't think about that, but man, oh man, I'm really loving this game. Now, in the past, these games also, Canada's beat by New Zealand, 107 to 76, with one only shy Gillis Alexander uh, having a massive game. He had 26 points and six steals. Man, oh man, this man can ball, and you cannot stop him. And then you're going to keep going to France, which France is meaning business. I mean, five warm-up games so far. And I'm telling you, they have been blowing out some teams. Tunisia, 93 to 36. Also, Montenegro, 80 to 69. 80 67 over Venezuela. And also victorious over Lithuania, 90 to 72. And also 76 to 70, respectively. I mean, it is getting crazy. And this one now, Gershon Yabusali, woo, has been a standout. And also, this guy right here, Rudy Gobert, are a pinnacle to the French team, because they are some big men that can ball. Now for Slovenia, specifically Luka Doncic, who hasn't played in every game, as we mentioned earlier, but he hasn't featured and he hasn't balling out, as you see right here, all right? And the loss to Greece recorded a 21-10-14 triple-double. What? A feat that he's achieved against Montenegro, and he erupted for 34 points and 13 rebounds and 14 assists. How about that? Luka is going the effing off at the World Cup. And guess what? It's about time. It's about time. But the thing about it is that we have all time for this. I mean, this is the catch up right here in the World Cup. And I said in the beginning, you could check out all the preparation games results, every single World Cup team ahead of the tournament if you go to the FIBA website and go check it out and check out all the highlights on the official website to be sure to head over there as soon as you can. Because what? Um, yo, World Cup is going to be insane this way. And I see some more people here coming up on YouTube. What's going on? I know I got my local people. Who's Scott and Lee. I see you, baby. Thank you so much for coming through. I know you're there. I know you're there. And also, let me know if your country is going to be participating in the World Cup. And also, don't forget, we're doing, we're doing a basically like a highlight game every day until the world cup so all the past world cups that we have it's been crazy watching usa ball spain ball you know germany yeah slovenia and seeing how much better these teams are getting over the years and it's also interesting seeing how these players are adapting to you know this style of play and what i mean by that usa is not used to fever rules this is FIBA rules. So the ball is a little different. The, the, the dimension is a little different. You could do certain things like, you know, hit the ball off the rim and stuff like that. So having players from the USA adapt into the rules, is, it's always kind of hard. But, you know, USA usually has such raw talent that they don't really even care. What's up, Tap Raptor? I see you in the chat. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Justin Taylor, again, salute to you. Where are you guys watching from? We want to know. We want to know. All right. Like I said before, this next person coming to the stage. Woo! I'm so excited. Now, this queen has been balling for years. But before I get it started, I got to introduce it. This is a guest interview on Shots Fired. And this one's going to be a good one. So let's go. All right. This young lady right here has been balling and she represents New Jersey. Now, your man Vince Chang will always represent New York City because I just always crapped on Jersey like a person who had Chipotle and a diarrhea. But the thing about it is that I've given Jersey props now. Because now I found some lovely people like this person here. And she's played all over. Not only has she played for the infamous Dawn Staley at South Carolina Game Cup, she's probably the world. And then also is the most beautiful accolade to be one of the ninth, ninth woman to be in the Hall of Blow Trotters, which again is a huge feat. Her nickname is Swish, but her real nickname is Fan Favorite. I've been watching her all over the world. Before I bring her in, we're going to watch a highlight video and watch how nasty this girl is. Let's go. between the legs crossing people taking people's mama taking people's money <laughs> taking people's pride i don't know what more i could do ladies and gentlemen lakeisha sutton how you doing girl i'm good how are you vince thank you for the introduction too 
Of course. Look, I was reading about you. I was a fan when I met you in Vegas. I was so happy to get you on this show. And I did not say anything that wasn't true. You're a beautiful person, a serious baller, and also a better human being because you've been giving back to the community. But thank you so much for being proud of it. I really appreciate you. No, thank you. This is a great, great show. I, I like. I'm enjoying it so much. <laughs> Now, the first question I ask every person when they come on the show, what is the first memory that you can recall that involved basketball? Oh, wow. Um, okay, so the first memory that I can recall with basketball was walking home from school and this guy, I guess he's like my neighbor, was shooting a ball into a crate. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that was also like my first time like seeing the basketball because I didn't watch it as a kid. I never really watched like basketball games. Uh -huh. And so I just found myself like, how is he getting that ball in that crate? And I think I just went in the house and just asked for a basketball and then, you know, went to school and was like asking for basketballs during gym class. So I was just like so confused by how he got that ball in that crate. So, yeah, that, I was about, <laughs> like nine, I think like nine. That's good. That's like the physics. You're like, how is he? It goes in. How do yeah, I do I that? Remember, it just had like a perfect spin and I... I asked him, I was like, how are you doing that? He's like, if you make it spin, it'll go in. So that just kind of sticks with me to this day. That was, the if it makes it spin, that's the funniest thing because we played ball for a while and we got people that make it spin, but we hate those ball players that have like that deadpan shot that there's no spin. And you're like, bro. It's just flat. Yeah, you're like, come on, man. We, we work in this form every day. Yeah, they're going to have to go to an impact training facility or something. <laughs> You have to go to Dubai. <laughs> You're right there. Now, it's funny because I also read that you have brothers and you used to play in the monkey bars and garbage cans instead of actual rims. So, one, I want to know how many brothers you had and what was it like playing on those playground kind of rules when you're just using the basketball? Yeah, so I have five brothers. I'm, like, right in the middle. Um, but, again, yeah, we, you know, in my, my community, we didn't have basketball courts. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the gyms that we did have were closed. So we just went to the monkey bars and we just identified the middle hoop as the hoop. Um, but it was fun, right? Like it was, it was gritty. It was tough. It was very competitive. Um, and you didn't want to lose because then you have to wait behind all the other neighborhood kids. So I learned quickly and early how to compete and how to just like win. I learned how to win early. You learned how to win early and you're from Jersey. You're from Trenton, right? If that's, if I get that right. Yeah, that's Which, right. I mean, I grew up in Long Island and Brooklyn, so I had some nitty gritty, but then, you know, I, I got the, the Caucasian kids, you know, you know <laughs> the Steve's yeah, yeah. and the Derrick's and whatever. A nice mix of both. Exactly. Nice little picture. Of me. It's two and two. But the funny thing was that is that you got that drive to win because I did some more research on you. You're the first player from New Jersey to win the Gatorade Player of the Year, which to me, I didn't even know about this award. And I'm going into it, and that's a high accolade because you attended the Trenton Catholic Academy. Explain yep. those years playing and getting that, you know, grind and that discipline to be so good at basketball. So I think, um, I just want to be clear. So I was the first in, like, our area, so Mercer okay. County. Okay. Yeah, I think there were people, like, from up North Jersey um, mm -hmm. that won it as well. But in my community, no one's ever done it before. And Got so, it. you know, that's still, like, a really huge accomplishment. But I think, again, it's just having great coaches that, you know, challenged me. They didn't make me comfortable, um, that see my potential and actually, like, you know, pushed me out of my comfort zones. Yeah. And you met me. Like, I'm like 5'7", five, 5'8", five, but <laughs> believe it or not, in high school I played in the post. So I was like, you know, I could do a little bit of everything. Um, and it wasn't until I was older where someone was like, because you were the smartest player on the floor. And so, you know, my versatility kind of helped. And, you know, like you said, just discipline and, and knowing that I have to put in work as ball handling and then that's separate from shooting and that's separate from playing one-on-one -on -one and five-on-five. -five. And so just discipline, time management, and just not, not being afraid to be competitive. I mean, the competitive is there. And again, we were chilling, having a good time. We were dancing on the dance floor and there was some kind of competitive and dancing too. Could you tell them? Yeah, you may, yeah, and you know what's so crazy? Like anyone that knows me, I'm not a dancer, but at the, at the party, like you were just killing it. So I'm like, and I looked around, I'm like, you're the only one dancing. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to dance. I'm going to keep dancing. And then we got the party started. Everybody started dancing. Party got then, lit real quick. <laughs> the, was it like the Cupid Shuffle or the Cha Cha Slide or something? Oh, yeah. So we did the wobble. It was the wobble. the wobble. It started with the electric slide. And then 
they put on the wobble, and I was like, all right, everybody, let's do this. And so now we're dancing. And, then and you then literally we're... made the entire party put their drinks down and just get on the dance floor. And I'm looking at you dancing because I'm not a dancer, and you were like killing it. Like you were dead serious. So I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> well, that's my because like, you're a point guard all right, or guard, right. you know. So you I'm know how to control. Guard. Yeah. Boom. So you know how to control. You have you got core vision. Me, I became a point. I was always the same thing as you. I'm only six foot two, six foot three. And okay. as you said, you're five seven. They put me in the post when I was in high school, which mm. helped me later on because I was always technically a shooter, but I could jump. Like I could jump out the gym. My knees are trash now. So, <laughs> but that's what makes you such an amazing player. Which are going to get into how when you went to college and you know the hard blow drivers, mm. but us playing against bigger opponents now we know how to d against the front court but also yes. go against the back court and that's what makes us so dangerous because i know how to guard a six foot ten guy i can guard him and actually hold my own because you know how to yeah. and stuff on we side help but the opposite when we get the ball we can get behind the three so if they yeah. don't expect our shot we're knocking it down but then we're crossing and then getting to the rim they gotta and pick their poison absolutely Boom, and you and you are poison because again, all the stuff you did in high school also got you somewhere. Which I want to put this picture up. You played at South Carolina, Gang, and Gang, and we talked about this um, right there and right there with Don Staley. <laughs> and you said straight up before they went on that run, you were the genesis, you know, the precursor of that success. Tell me what it was like to be, again, underneath a legend like Don and also playing at one of the top women NCAA schools in the country. Um, You know, it, honestly, when I was there, it was a little bit different because we were like at the bottom of the SEC. Mm -hmm. um, but each year we just got better and better. Um, yeah. It took time. But to be a part of her first recruiting class, that's something that I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, I don't take it for granted because... I remember, like you can see in the picture, like the, the, the stands is empty behind me, but yeah. all of our family would be across from us or behind us, right? And yep. so every game, it was more and more re like community just kind of pouring in to kind of see what we were doing. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I took great pride in, you know, playing for Dawn Staley, but also Lisa Boyer, who's the mm -hmm. associate head coach. Mm -hmm. um, she's she's the, the, she's just, I can't even put it in words, but she coached Dawn Staley when she was younger. Gotcha. So the mentor, learn, yeah, yeah, like to learn from both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, my most transformative coach was Nikki McCray, who passed away in June. Rest um, yeah, rest in peace to coach. But, you know, it was just an honor. Like I'm playing for three Olympic gold medalists and WNBA all stars. And so if they played at the highest level and they're telling me to do something, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. I'm not even going to ask no questions like it's already done. And that's that discipline because, and I want to take a step back because I want to get into Dawn Staley because how she knows how to win. You knew how to win too. I mean, you were the MVP of the state championship as well. And also first player to record a quadruple, a quadruple double. A quadruple. Oh, you did your you think, you think, you think I'm going to have someone on this show who is a major in journalism and not do some research on somebody, ma'am? Don't you oh my crazy. goodness. Okay. Yeah. Don't no one's ever asked me about that before. So that's really cool. I want to know because one, I've never heard of a quad. I know triple doubles happens all the time. We just talk about, right. you know, Slovenia, Luka Doncic gets it. But to have a quadruple double, you know, going and shy of 2,000 points, explain yeah. that. I want, I want you to explain that. When you looked at the box score and you went, oh, snap, those are four crazy. double digits. Yes. What was that feeling? Um, you know, to be honest, like I said, I, I, I didn't watch ball as a kid and I was just very like focused on my studies and my academics. Mm -hmm. But when I played, there was like this New Jersey chat room. And so we would look at it during lunchtime and someone posted like, oh, my God, I can't believe Sutton had, you know, I had like, I don't know how many, like, it was like 20 something points, like 15 rebounds, um, like 15 assists. And I had like a bunch of steals yep. and it just never been done before. And I don't think like. I don't even to this day. I don't play for accolades or try to accomplish things. I just play within the flow of the game. Yep. Um. But that's something that I can always just hang my hat on because I was more than just a scorer. Yep. And in fact, I actually played with my starting five. Four of us scored a thousand points. So, you know, and I wasn't the most like athletic or the best shooter in high school, mm -hmm. but I was to get their rebound and just you know I love setting my teammates up. So that was amazing. Yeah. Um, but then also to be able to 
win those MVPs and those championships again. I, I didn't plan for it. It just kind of happened. And I was exactly. like, sure, I'll, I'll take the trophies. Like, <laughs> like do, I'll do I, that. I think that. I think that prepared me for college because when I got to the SEC, mm-hmm. I was like one of the few guards that knew how to go against 6'5 and 6'4. And I could like go right hand, left hand. Like I would go up right and I would just change it in the middle of the air. And it, mm-hmm. I don't know. I have a very unique gift, but I, I definitely know it's like all God given. Unique gift, versatility was described with you. And ladies and gentlemen, you have to get here. She right here was a WNBA prospect. I want to know what happened there, but thousand point scorer and also all SEC defensive player of the year. Okay, well, defensive team. I want to say of the year. I don't want to give you that too much. But defensive team is big, <laughs> is big. And then you get the nickname against USC. Again, we know top school fan favorite yeah what to, like basketball as you said before in the interview you said you don't go for the accolade so what gives you that drive when you step on that court because you're just a monster from start to um i think just being an underdog right like i took so much pride in uh like i i just remember like playing again you were here and you could read the hype and articles like all american this or this player and i would just be like they're just like me they just lived in a community where basketball was big like mm-hmm. basketball is not big it wasn't big in trenton new jersey at the time yeah and so you know i just laced my shoes up like everybody else but i took pride in like defending the other team's best player and mm-hmm. my mentality was like they may not know who I am before this game, but before it ends, they're going to remember my name. And so that's kind of what I carry. You know, I carried that, you know, mm-hmm. that mentality and that swagger, like, on and off the court. Because also, Vince, like, I came from out of nowhere. Like, most people that go to SEC schools, they're from the South. Oh, like, you right. Like, like, who is this kid from New Jersey? Like, she's not on anybody's scout report. She wasn't All-American. She wasn't on TV. She wasn't a Jordan Brand classic kid. Like, who is she? Where did she come from? And so I just like being unknown. And that's insane to me. So now I got to know how, what, what other, well, first of all, where other schools were looking at you except, you know, South Carolina? Who else was looking at you? Yeah. So honestly, it was like a lot of like NEC schools. So like, uh, like Monmouth, all the schools in like New Jersey, like this little area, because yeah. for my AAU, we never travel outside of the tri state. And so I had a lot of Ivy League schools as well. I was actually set to go to Princeton, but at like the last minute, I got really nervous about academics and basketball, not knowing at like 17 that that's someone's job to make sure that we get to the host. So I was just like, well, I don't think I could do Ivy League. So, I, you know, Dawn Staley, true story. I tell people you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Okay. I'll never forget. Like we're literally, we had a game. She pulls up in this big black truck. Mm-hmm. And I mean this in the most humble and respectful way possible. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know who she was at the time. Because I told you I wasn't like a basketball kid. Like, I just played yeah. it. Mm-hmm. So we're walking in the, the gym together. Go to the locker room. Play the game. We walk out. Everyone's like, did you know Dawn Staley was here? She wants you. She wants you. And I'm just like, they like, USA, WNBA, Martin Show, Face of Basketball, the women's Michael Jordan. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, all right, bet. Yeah. Most of the I was a senior. She came there to see a freshman. Her name was Brianna Canty. Okay. Okay. She was like 13 or 14, but she had every top school in the country recruiting her. Wow. She walked out and was like, hey, I just took a job at South Carolina. I have scholarships. Like, would you be interested? And no live events. I literally went to prom. I graduated and I was like in the car going to South Carolina, like all within the same week. It was crazy. Wait a minute, how's it? Like it was very unorthodox. It was just like very random and not planned. Yo, that to me is like for Sasha, put up the picture right now of Lakeisha giving a high five or getting yelled out by Dawn because you know she yells a lot. But she's probably the- yelling at me to stop passing the ball so much. <laughs> so she's telling you to be offensive minded. But you get now, now, now she's like one of the greatest ever do it of all times. You know, Definitely having greatest. commercials with Mike Shiskevsky. You know, with the, yeah. You know, let's athletes. just let's just take the one out. She's the greatest of all. Okay, time. okay, okay. Hey, she's hey, hey. Champ. Coach Stanley, I didn't want no disrespect. No disrespect. Yeah, she's I don't want... already. Okay, she got I'm... more players in the WBA on the commercials, <laughs> USA basketball. She's stamped. Greatest of all time. And like you said, 
I always tell people when I, how I got here, you never know who someone's watching. You never know who's watching. I got this job from a podcast I did two years prior of getting my first quote unquote FIBA job. I never wow. thought anyone is going to listen to this podcast. And I get a random message on LinkedIn. And before you know it, just to <laughs> condense it, I'm flown to California three months later. Four months later, I'm in China. Two years later, after the pandemic, I get a show on Twitch. And then, then I visit Denmark. Egypt and Singapore. So like you said, you never know who's watching, which to me is crazy that again, That's you're an underdog. Oh, we, we'll, 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 we'll go out, you know, and we can really talk about this because this is about you. Yeah. About me. But that is the stuff I'm going to do in Shots Fire. Now we got about 163 people in here right now. So let you know, you're listening to Shots Fire right now. This is your man, Vinching, I get the energy. This right here is a living legend, Lakeisha Sutton, who is also a Harlem Globetrotter, which I'm going to get into in just a moment because that's another accolade being the ninth woman ever to be on it. But we're talking about how you never know who is Watch in it your peripheral. Like you never know who's watching. You never know when you go to a court, when you go to a party, when you go to wherever, somebody's looking at you and you yep. don't know if that's that person can change your life. This woman has went to South Carolina. She's a part of his legacy. Then had a chance to go to the WNBA, which I kept reading WNBA prospect. What happened in which you didn't take that leap to the WNBA? So honestly, that's a great question. I think, honestly, I think that's, you know, that's only a, a question I think Coach Daly could answer. Okay. Um, because I just remember like playing, I'll never forget, I met Ruthie Bolton, who's also an Olympic gold medalist. Um, mm -hmm. And we were going to the Sweet 16 for the first time ever. And she's like, you can go to WNBA. And she was just like, but your team has to make it far in the tournament. Oh. And this is my senior year. So at this point, I'm like, all right, well, we are where we are. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I just remember, um, you know, I was on a phone with Coach Daly and like some commissioner, coach somebody, but they, mm -hmm. I had tore my meniscus. Like the public didn't know that, even though I was all SEC, um, all SEC defense team, mm -hmm. I had a torn meniscus my whole senior year. Like no one even knew that. You still got so, it with that pain. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like people have no idea. Like, People have no idea the sacrifices that I made for my team. And I think as an adult, like if I knew what I know now, I would have definitely redshirted my senior year. However, they were just like, oh, because of your injury, how about you go overseas first? And then, you know, if you bounce back, then you come back. Uh -huh. But I but I also felt like I wasn't really properly guided either. Like I, okay. in full transparency, I wasn't like in Coach Daly's office. Like I really want to go to WBA. What do I got to do? Like, please help me because at – 19 20 21 i didn't even think that was possible because no one talked to me about it like no one mm. spoke that life into me so you know it was when i got the notification that i was a prospect i was like oh well that's cool my name's on a, like the little wba thing but <laughs> i think that that's why i'm so intentional about speaking life into people because had someone said to me my junior or senior year like hey you got a possibility to go to wba here's what you need to work on here's what they want to see i would have been more aware yeah i would have been more aware of the opportunity like but i was just trying to get through each day because i was in so much pain with my knee you know what i mean like that's insane i mean you're a warrior crazy. you're a warrior. Yeah, I mean, if people are in the chat put some applause in the chat we got t raptor <laughs> from toronto because that's because what makes me laugh is that also you never know sometimes with the people around you mentors coaches sometimes they keep information from us i know in my high school I wanted to go Division One so bad, but one of my coaches was just keen, like, you will never be a Division Two player. You will yeah. never be a Division One player. You're just a D3 player, and that's it. Yeah. I found that's a letter. That's so funny. I had a similar situation. But I think, like, I overheard someone say, like, because every guard that we played against in SEC, yeah, I cannot make this up. They all got drafted. So I was like, wait a minute. No. I I held my own against her. I, I She didn't score on me. Like, what? I can't answer why I didn't really get drafted, but I don't, I'm not bothered by it because mm -hmm. I'm just happy for the other women that did because there's a need to continue to support women and uplift them. So I just believe like whatever happened was meant to happen. But I mm -hmm. think that if I would have had more guidance yeah. or direction, I definitely could have. Like, I still feel like right now I can go play in WNBA, like right now. Oh, I've seen you ball. Well, I've really I mean, I, I, I been creeping on you. If a team was looking, like, if they're trying to expand, they were looking for just, like, a backup point guard, low salary cap. <laughs> I'm there. I mean, the Liberty right now playing against the Aces, they just won the Commissioner's Cup, 
which I again, it, yeah. it was dope. Which again, people who are on Twitch right now, watch the WNBA. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Get past this whole that women, women can, women are dunking now. Okay, women are catching bodies in the air, which again <laughs> is insane. But yo, as you, if you didn't hear right now, about a couple of weeks ago, the Liberty broke the records on the amount of attendance finally at Brooklyn. Um, I was there too. It was like stand, like it Wait was. Wait, you were there? I was there. So I was there. Really? I was woman. I should have texted you. I didn't think it would. You know what? We, so, Elena Coates, she's on the Aces. She uh, gave me a couple tickets. So, like I said, all of my Gamecock sisters are in the WNBA. So it's like, why would I be mad for if they in it? Then that means I'm in it too. So, and that's that community. Yeah. But there's a good story for you because even though you didn't go to the WNBA, you got to travel the world. Just yes. to say a few: Taiwan, Finland, Ecuador, Germany, and Bulgaria. Yeah. Which again, five countries. Uh, Wow, um, completely opposite, all of them. <laughs> I, it's still amazing to me, and I really have to say this before I get into this. And I'm gonna say, as a black woman, yeah, as a black queen, having a chance to go to Princeton would have been amazing. But I understood you want to have that balance between education and basketball. But if now, I went to Princeton, I probably would have had a statue by now. <laughs> I genuinely believe that. But you know what's so funny, Vince? Like, like. In my mind, I don't, in my heart, I'm not like, oh my God, I want to be a college coach. But I think that I still can go to Princeton and become a doctor or the first black female coach in school. Like, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, just, you know. <laughs> no, you Especially can't. coming from Trenton, New Jersey. Like if anyone Googles Trenton, New Jersey, you'll be like, wow, good for her. Yo, we know, I mean, I'm from Brooklyn, you know, Crown Heights, Bed-Stuy, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, same type of time. I got Long Island, you know, Baldwin, shout out to Baldwin. No, ain't like that, but you know, Brooklyn. But, yeah. but I want to get this that you get to travel the world on some that's a dime. Visiting Taiwan, Finland, Ecuador, Germany, Bulgaria. Is there one country that you had the most fun in when you were playing basketball? Oh, wow. Um, they were all fun. If I can I rank them just like yes, you can. Yeah, because they were all they were all really great experiences. And I think it's because the owners of those teams. Mm -hmm. They knew about my brand, so they had my number. They had they allowed me to sell my merchandise. Like it was just like awesome. Yeah, it was beautiful. But I think uh, first, I would say I would say Ecuador. Ecuador, okay, okay, Ecuador. Because I can speak Spanish, so I didn't need a translator follow me around the whole day and every day. You speak Spanish? Yeah, so that was great. I was in Quito, Ecuador, and basically, it's like you're on the beach. Mm -hmm. You're like on the beach, basically. Okay. And that was that was definitely number one. I would recommend everyone to visit Ecuador if they can. It's beautiful. Okay. Um, two would be I think Germany. Germ. Okay, Germany number two. Okay, it's interesting. Germany. I want to go speak in the Deutsch. Germany was great. Mm -hmm. I think three would be Taiwan. Okay, Ta Taiwan, I'm really interested because I love, you know, being over there in Asia and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was like Taiwan up there with Ecuador, but I wasn't there as long. It was more like a, you know, a short stint, but. Yeah. You know, in Asia, they think everybody's Michael Jordan's sister. Or brother, like. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because when I was in China, they thought I was Michael B. Jordan. They thought I was Chris Brown. They thought I was Steve Harvey. They thought yep. I was Ryan Artest and Kobe Not Bryant. Not Steve Harvey. I swear someone said, hey, look, Family Feud, Steve Harvey. I was like, bro. Oh like, but I also had a huge mohawk, so maybe they, like, had it from, like, the old. Anyway, yeah, yeah I got all the black people. Okay, so then last was, no, can you start Bulgaria and Finland. So I, I was Finland. Yeah. So, so I would put Bulgaria last mm -hmm. um, because that was, you know, I think that was my first time. I've personally, as a black woman, I've never experienced racism. Okay. in these countries like okay. they love me they think i'm a white lady honestly or i'm puerto rican or something but my teammates like my teammates always got chastised or picked on but in bulgaria one of my teenagers her name was esther yeah she's actually bulgarian which was crazy like she's a black bulgarian mm -hmm. long story short we're in a market and these guys was just like monkey signs and I'm looking at them like, like I'm a professional, but I'm like, yo, I'm a I'm a black woman first, right? Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. I realized that some of my teammates they didn't know how to speak up for themselves because they felt like, well, I'm not the point guard, so they're not gonna send you home, but they yeah. might send you know. So mm -hmm. I just always had to like stand up for everybody, which I was okay with. But 
Bulgaria was like very like racist is okay. to like darker skinned people. So yeah. I didn't really, again, I was fine. They paid me on time. I had no yeah. issues, but the you know, basketball people. only lasts for an hour. So those other hours, I'm just watching my teammates just be miserable. So that wasn't very fun, you know? So I got you. You're such a team player. And that's yeah. why the nickname fan favorite is a huge <laughs> thing. Cause I went to fan favorite.com, which I want to please bring it up, Sasha. Fan favorite uh, club and the fanfavorite.com doing all the research of what you want to do with this amazing, you know, company. But is it, is it more of a company? Is it a community? What is the, you know, statement and summary of fan favorite club? So fan favorite club, um, it's it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. um, but club stands for creating leaders who understand business. OK, so, you know, ultimately, I just wanted to have a safe place for families to go to, to, you know, yeah, you can learn basketball, but basketball is also a business. If you become a pro at it, it becomes a business. Yep. Um, if you don't love basketball, you don't even like it. You can still be a part of the fan favorite club because in any business you need marketing skills. You need administration yep. skills. Mm -hmm. You need to, you need to know how to communicate with people and just, you know, project management. So yeah. it's really just a safe space. And if I could be really frank, it's my version of Hogwarts. For any oh, Harry Potter. wait a minute. You're, you're a Harry Potter fan? I am I am a Harry Potter, like, diehard fan. Like, fan. So you know what I'm about. I have a scar on my forehead, everything, whole thing. You have a scar on your forehead. Okay. I have the thing on my forehead, yes. No, 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 no. You, you don't. Hey, hey. Did we just become that <laughs> Okay, don't do that. Okay? Don't. Because you know my favorite quote of all time is from Albus Dumbledore, never let regret be your most loyal companion. Okay? I don't, don't, yeah, don't make me. Okay, when God had Leviosa, don't, don't, listen, Leviosa. Listen. Ah, okay. we're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to do a test to see who's a real Harry Potter fan. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll do that. You know, but like, so, like, in short, I feel like, like, right, like Harry Potter was a muggle and he was a wizard. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't accepted by the muggles because he had special talents. Then the wizards thought he was not good enough because he wasn't mean, right? Yeah. And so the fan favorite club is literally a space for people of all economic backgrounds. Yeah. You don't have to be a basketball player. That's just what my gift was. So mm -hmm. that's what we do. But, um, you know, it's just a safe place for people to to, to learn who they are and who they want to become. So yeah, I mean, my, my hope, yeah, my hope is to start a nonprofit, um, which I want to call Operation Safe. Um, so basically, it's, it's just giving access to, to kids to do sports, arts, um, faith-based education, mm -hmm. as well as home economics. So that's my next plan. Yeah, but also, you, you use CLUB as an acronym. Say it one more time, because it blew my mind. Like, it went like... <laughs> so it's, it's creating leaders who understand business. That, I, went, mother, I know there ain't no W, but I was like, man... Like, and also your model is, I believe in me, which yes. you believe in life, and which believing in yourself got you somewhere, which please bring this up, Sasha, to the Harlem Globetrotters, which is not a small feat, okay? I know some of the girls, that I, I, I hot shot Manny Love, I've talked to you so many times. Chris oh, I love Manny. Oh, Manny is so awesome. I, I love that dude so much. And again, being from the Caribbean as well, but look at this woman right here. You got the nickname Wish. Now, yeah. Fan favorite to Swish, and we saw in the you know the promo video of you crossing a dude, going under the basket, could have got the lay, but then went behind the arc. When did Swish became that official nickname with the Harlem Girl Tribe? Um, so actually I earned the nickname in our tryouts. People don't know to be a globe trotter, you really have to know how to play basketball. Like it's not just yeah. like, yeah, if you've been to the game, it's fun, it's entertaining, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there's a whole tryout, like it's very it's very uh, methodical in how they pick their players. Mm -hmm. And for me uh, specifically, I remember I was just at one of my friend's cookouts and I had a, a video I put up was like kind of going like little fake viral-ish. Mm -hmm. Okay. I haven't went viral yet, but they were like, hey, you should try out for the Globetrotters. And I'm just like, I, I had never even seen a game prior to becoming a Globe Trotter. Mm -hmm. So they, they invited me to a game in Atlantic City and I watched it and I was like, this is really cool. Long story short, they put me like you, they put me in a plane like three days later. I went to Atlanta <laughs> and it was like five other girls in a tryout and I felt bad because I knew right then I was like, they not they not better than me. Like okay. <laughs> sorry. But no, we um so when we got to we had to do like you know three man weaves and like dribbling and showcase whatever I had no tricks, my tricks were trash. I had no tricks because <laughs> I'm coming from competitive basketball, like it was yeah. I was getting paid to play professionally. 
Mm-hmm. But what I think made me stand out was when we had to shoot, mm-hmm. you have to shoot like 30 feet behind the three point line. Like it's not a regular oh, three point. Oh, okay. And I went like seven for 10. Like, oh. and everybody, damn. Which was crazy because if you watch my college highlights, I I I shot the three, but that wasn't my go to. It was more like mid ranges, get into the basket, whatever, whatever. But mm-hmm. the next thing I know, I was being called Swish, so you know it worked out. <laughs> Swish <laughs> Sutton and ninth. I mean, people don't realize the Harlem Globetrotters has been around for years, decades, and mm-hmm. not that many women play on it. And we know a couple, but to be the ninth one overall, I mean. How does that feel for women basketball when you have what quote unquote a you know misogynistic kind of basketball world allowing women to actually play with y'all, but then showcasing your talents and actually going against other men? What does that feel like being a woman playing on the Harlem Crowd Drives? Um, again, just a place of gratitude. Like, mm-hmm. just it feels, it makes you feel proud. Like, no, it's yeah. not like he's letting me score. He's actually guarding me. I'm actually playing. Um, but I think that. When one when one woman wins, we all win. Yep. So I think that if it wasn't for Lynette Woodard, who was the first ever Globetrotter, mm-hmm. or Fatima Lister, um, you know, those ladies made it possible for us to come through those doors because they did it when it wasn't like a, a known thing, mm-hmm. and they did it really well. And they, you know, any sport that you play—basketball, football, soccer, lacrosse, whatever. You have moms, you have daughters, you have sisters. There's somebody's wife, somebody's grandmother, somebody's auntie. And so mm-hmm. I think there's a need for women to continue to be uplifted in, in the sports world. But it takes a certain leader who's willing to give up some of their power and ego to Ooh. make room for somebody else. So I think that's, you know, again, I'm just proud. No, proud. Be proud because you're, 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 like, you're foundation to this whole you know interview you you're not afraid to step aside to have someone get farther in front of you you have the humility about that which to me is such a lost art nowadays that we see especially i'm in the comedy world or the basketball world and now the social media world. everyone wants to you know climb on other people but you're not listening you're literally putting the two hands up going no no go oh come on yeah but like use like use my shoulders though yeah it's cool yeah, and that's what makes you the coach of the George Lady Cougars, which I think I have that page up now. So the George Lady <laughs> Cougars, is, is that a high school team? Is it like a middle school team? Like, who are these Lady Cougars? Uh, it's a high school team. Um, and so it's funny. I'm laughing because, like, you really did your research. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, um, people have been asking me to coach, like, literally. I was offered college jobs right out of college because I played for Don Staley, but I was like, yeah. I don't – it's not what my heart is telling me to do, right? Yeah. And so long story short, COVID happened. So I say, you know what? I'm gonna take a step back. Yep. And my my high school coach, he was like, the George School, it's a it's a hidden gym. Like it's yeah. a beautiful facility. It's like a Stanford for high school, it's like a Princeton for high school. Oh, nice. Very highly academic, very hard to get into. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had just hired a new athletic director, Kurt okay. Nice. And they were looking for like a female and a black female at that. And so I think I checked the boxes. Okay. All the and I just like threw my name in the hat and they called me back like the same day. And I, you know, again, it's a challenge, right? Like I, I feel like my whole story and my life's testimony is building programs. Like I'm a creator. I solve problems. And so I was like, sure, you guys are not known for basketball. No problem. I'll try to build the program. Just give me access to, you know, the facilities. Like, yep. And like, whatever you want. Go ahead. Yep. And Sasha, bring up um uh Lakeisha's page right here. Bring up her uh, uh Instagram page. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see it. It's right there in her bio. Cause I want everyone to follow this page. Uh, because it says, you know, the George Lady Cougars will follow her as well. But go up to the top. Right there should be the fourth one. Come back <laughs> this way. Come I'm looking this way, but it's this way. And it should be the Lady Cougars. If you could see it, definitely follow them because you're making a difference in so many different places. And I also want to scroll down a little bit, um, Sasha. You got <laughs> Nipsey Hustle right there on your hoodie, okay? Oh, yeah, you, for sure. Nipsey Hustle, again, has been, I see like a like a, a role model to you, but you also just got a mural of him. Where, though? Was that the fan favorite, like, headquarters? Fan favorite, yeah, fan favorite headquarters. Yeah. So, so, listen, this is about to blow your mind. True story. Okay. Um, I think it was like 2018, 
Nipsey had put out something like, I'm looking to do an agency, send your send in your marathon story. Okay. Or why you want to be a part of marathon. Okay. Send in my story. Somebody from his team get back to me, like, oh, we would love to have you out in Cali. But in 2018, I'm playing basketball in Europe. So it's like, I can't get to Cali. Yeah. Unfortunately, 2019 happens, he passes away. And so I'm like, wait a minute. Take away, you know, if we would have met, we would have been like this. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're the best friend. Oh, we wait have literally the same mentality, the same views on a lot of yeah. things. Long story short, people don't know that I built my brand in 2013. Okay. My actual brick and mortar, my club manifested in 2019. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So like I've been doing like community outreach and give backs and different events since 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, but I literally insane. saved all of my globe trotter checks to open up my physical space. Mm-hmm. And so I went in, I was just telling this guy, and this is how I believe about opportunity. I took my niece and nephew to like a fair. This guy mm-hmm. was painting canvases, like maybe this big. It yeah. was so little. Mm-hmm. So I go, hey, you ever did like a, a mural before? He's like, yeah, I do murals all the time. I said, well, have you ever done like a wall mural? He was like, no, I haven't. But if you give me the opportunity, I won't let you down. Okay. In that moment, I was like, all right, well, this is what I want. And so that that's what I think is important about leadership, right? It's like mm-hmm. people have problems to solve, but they don't want to give the opportunity to people with no experience. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they look at everyone with the experience and it's like, but they didn't do it right. Or they're not doing it 100%. They're half-assing it, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Long story short, I give this guy the key to my gym. I'm thinking he gonna make it like under my TV. I leave. I come back the next day. He took over my whole wall, and I was just like, "Well, thank you," because I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, "Well, I know how much Nipsey means to you," and you know, he he did his research. The only way I learned about business and branding was listening to his music from like 2013. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was a way to pay homage, really, to yeah. you know just. And that's good. Last time that I checked, it's one of my favorite yeah, songs. Yeah, like just just keep creating, keep believing in yourself, keep empowering your team, and just keep giving back to the community. So that's what that means. And I think that's another thing that you could definitely preach is that people always want to get something cheap, fast, but also efficient. But the thing is that if you want it good, it's not going to be cheap. cheap. All right. Yeah. If if you want it good, then it ain't really going to be fast. But if you want it fast, it may be tough. But you have to find someone because that's why, like, for example, my sister does photography and she's like, I don't know how to get started. I said, reach out to people who are also on the up and coming so right. that you can do the portfolio. And that's it. This person, as you said, just met whatever. And that's how you collab. Right. Did a fantastic job. I watched the mirror. The mirror looks beautiful. It looks great. But now he has a portfolio. A portfolio. And this let me tell you. He literally sent me a message and he was like, you changed my life. He was like, I've been getting booked like literally nonstop. He said, I haven't got booked in like a year before I met you. And I was like, well, congratulations. Good luck. Like, but that's the thing. Opportunity. Some people really just need an opportunity. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just give me a chance. Give me one shot and see if I can make it. And the thing you miss all the shots you don't take. And then also with that, I mean, you do three and three basketball tournaments for over 20 middle school students, you know, in Brunswick and all over. So you're always giving back and you're donating basketballs um, at the whole. But like you, you do so much. But as much as I keep giving your flowers, because you're an inspiration. I, I can definitely say that. But I got a little surprised because I also did one more research. As I said, you want to be a journalist. You're in journalism. That's your degree. Journalism. Yes. Correct? Yes. Bring yes. up this picture because this picture <laughs> is the epitome of journalism. Because I look at you now and I've seen you. And so, look at that right there. You ready. You ready, you ready for ESPN. Look oh, at this. yeah, yeah. That was my college. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you And you kind of look like Don Stanley too. Just a little bit. But You think so? Just a little bit. I can, I can see y'all could be related. But so let's speak, let's speak this into existence real quick. Okay. I always tell her two things. The University of South Carolina, they owe me an official visit because I never got to do it. When they get the pamper, throw the red carpet out. I just ended up there. Okay, okay. Kidding. Um, but if they ever do a biopic on Dawn Staley, I should not like there should be no auditioning. They just need to call me. Mm-hmm. Let's go through the script and just keep it moving. Just put the little beauty marks here and there, and boom, you got it. You got it. <laughs> That's all yeah, no, but that so true story. This experience, my senior year in the journalism school, 
Yeah. It literally propelled me and prepared me for life as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. because, you know, like you're literally responsible for a different job every day yes. for four yeah. months. So like one day I was anchored and I was a graphic designer and I was a weather lady, sports lady, teleprompter, yep. director, <laughs> producer. Mm -hmm. What I found was that I really love just being behind the scenes. Like, and they would say, you look great on camera, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I know. But I also like bringing people together because yep. Everyone doesn't know how to do that respectfully. So that's, and I think that's why me and you mesh so well. And I think we should hang out more because <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, also real stuff. The reason why I think I'm decently good at what I do is that I never want to be the main dish. I'm not right. the prime rib. I'm not the salmon. I'm not, the, I'm the calamari. I'm the appetizer. I'm right. the thing that gets everybody to the table. All right. right? And it's still be there. And you have that natural ability as well. And you're not afraid to put in the work. And I also want to shout out people from Saudi Arabia right now. People from Saudi Arabia are watching on YouTube. Shout out to Dean Manthus. How you doing? Shout out to the followers from Pierre, Ihuman, and also um, Arby Basky 20 And the thing about your story is that, again, you're just playing in Jersey, just having fun from just watching a kid shoot a basketball. You're like, I just want to learn that. And then transferring all this discipline <laughs> to then going to SE, um, SEC Con College playing for one of the top coaches ever do, traveling the world, becoming a whole new entrepreneur, now making a difference in the community is, again, so inspirational. And you still, till this day, want to give more back. Yeah. That's to me, is... you like... So it just... Yeah, I just... Oh! Like, oh, just shower <laughs> me. Shower me with this positive energy, which is beautiful. I mean, the I one thing... Like I feel like I got to double up though, right? Because that's what Nipsey was doing. That's what Kobe was doing. But I, but the only difference is I just feel like I'm just really good at solving problems, right? Like you have these athletes that have it in their contract to do charity work. They hire these teams that have no idea what to do with them. Yeah. And if they fizzle out of the league, then it's just like they're back home. But I'm like, if you learn how to build your brand while you're still playing, one, you can have something to fall back on. But two, you can also hire the right people to keep your – Thing going why don't you become an agent but well, a, a particular specialized agent in which that you specialize in that from women coming from college going to the WNBA or staying overseas you'll be in charge of expanding their brand but then putting the right people at the in right place. table for them you know yeah, 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 yeah. I'm put that in the universe um yeah. but then also I, I do I do want to say one thing to you is just that what really makes me amazed is that also you're so humble like I, I'm talking to you right now, and you're just such a very soft soul. And I've seen you play. I know that can turn like Jeff and Hyde. <laughs> but you keep it going like there. And I just want to, did that come from like playing with your brothers, being humbled by, you know, being like quote unquote the middle child, or that just was always in you? Um, I think that it's just, it's just innately in me. Mm -hmm. um, I, my childhood role model uh, was Aaliyah. Oh, so I used to want to just be like her. Like she was like, just, she was a fan favorite, right? Like she was yeah. very kind. Everyone spoke very highly of her, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I just, I've been in rooms around people where I just feel like they do too much. And I was like, I don't want to be like that. <laughs> and then, I don't know. I think it's what you said earlier. Like, I don't need the world's validation. Like I know exactly what like God put on my heart. Um, and so I'm just literally just being obedient and I'm just trying my best to, give what I received, but also make people feel like valued. And because the world is very tough. The world is hard. Life is hard. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if people were more kind and respectful, everyone wouldn't feel so like anxious and like depressed and like, you know, all yeah. these emotions, these negative feelings. So I just try to be, you know, I teach by being basically. Yeah. And I remember you're a Harry Potter fan. And I think this was like one of those missing clips that wasn't really in the movie. Uh, his, you know, quote unquote, adopted brother. I always forget his name, though, uh, when he lived in the house. Treating him like Harry crap. Potter? And Harry, yeah, I'm going to teach you something. There was a scene in which uh, his uncle, you know, quote unquote, hated him so much. And the uncle's son uh, was a ha 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 ha. Uh, the, the, the fat kid. No, I forgot his name, too, because he yeah. was so mean. So, he was just jealous. When they got older. Um, he was going to go to college, the 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 son, right? And yeah. Harry, like, good luck. And I said, well, I'm just sorry that, you know, you hated me for so much. And he walks back and he looks at Harry and says, I don't hate you. And I've never hated you. 
And it was in that moment of like, I'll always love you. And yeah. the point of me saying is that if you have that kindness, even with people that are jealous from you, you both can advance. You both yeah. can move forward because all negative energy does is we get more negative energy. Yeah. It just gets darker and darker and darker. It takes less muscles to smile. It's free to be kind. And yep. it goes so far. And I want Burn to do this. Yep, exactly. Burn now, with up. your company, Fan, mm -hmm. uh, Fan Favorite Club, please put this up. Any person that comes to this show, I want to show my support. So I went to your website, and Sasha, bring it up. And I purchased one of those T-shirts, which I want to end the show oh, with thank this. You. Because I want to know what was so what's so pinnacle. Because you have four shirts about this. Coach um, <laughs> Kalik, right? I'm a yes. number. I guess he said, I guess rest in peace. He's not with us no more. Is he still around? Yeah, he passed away. How impactful he was to, because I did read in my research, it was him and Coach Mel really yep. molded you becoming the basketball player. And I want to use this moment for you, you know, like, to give his flowers and say how mm -hmm. important he was, you know, to, you know, Lakeisha Sutton's work. Um, yeah, I mean, Coach Khalik was, you know, definitely more than a basketball coach. He was my first youth coach. Um mm -hmm. You know, again, volunteer, right? Volunteering his time just to teach kids how to play basketball. And I was the only girl playing with all his boys. And so he's like, I got to build a girls team around this kid here. Mm -hmm. And I literally was coached by him from like fourth grade up until 12th grade. Wow. And that was great, right? We won championships since I was a kid. But I mm -hmm. think what I love about him the most was like he was literally like a best friend, like as an adult. When I started the Fan Favorite Club, I called him, like, I need you to come teach these kids how to play basketball. And true story, he walked in and was like, it's too small. And I was like, no, just, you know, Do it. <laughs> make it work. Yeah. And I'll never forget, we had 100 people in the gym. And he looked at me, he was like, this is so needed. He's like, please, whatever you do, no matter how hard it get, don't close it down. And so he just always encouraged me, right? Like, if I didn't get that validation or that, like, thank you from the whoever's, like, he always was just like, you're dope. Thank you. Keep going. Don't quit. How can I help you? How can I help you? Um, and so just he just believed in me. And, he, you know, he people will argue, like, who's best from the city? And he would be, like, the only one, like, no, she is. Like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> so I just feel like Coach Khalik is someone who positioned me, if that makes sense. Like, he, he prepared me and he positioned me. And so now I feel like it's I owe it to him to just keep everything going. Mm, that's a bar prepared and positioned that's a bar yeah. right there i'm just I mean, yeah like as a kid he prepared me right like basketball basketball mm -hmm. um but as an adult like even you know he positioned me at the george school like if if he didn't tell me about the george school i would never even knew about the position exactly. um, yeah. and if he didn't tell me about the need for the city i would have never thought twice about opening the center and train because i was traveling the world i was all over the place Mm -hmm. um, but most importantly, too, I think my first job, like, was a globe charter. But my first like office job, mm -hmm. I currently am the supervisor for recreation for the city of Trenton. Oh wow! Okay. Like, yeah, they, they basically created the position, and my only role is to create year-round basketball programs and events. <laughs> That's like the perfect job for you. Period. <laughs> like my first day, my first job. But again, it was Coach Khalik who was talking to the mayor and everybody, like, y'all need help with this, and tell her. And, you know, I was like, I'll try it. And so my first day in office, they're like, hey, we got 18 basketball courts. I want you to redesign all of them. We got four rec centers. I want you to redesign everything. And so that's what I've been doing the last two years. That's insane. I would love that. Please yeah. let me know when you have an event. If you ever need an MC, please let me know. If no, I please help. don't tell me that because we actually have an event on the 24th, which is next Thursday. What time? Uh, the, the ribbon cutting is going to be at 4.30, but the games are 5.30, 6.30, and 7.30. I am going to... <sighs> I'm flying to Mexico next Thursday. Oh, no. If, no, so this thing in mind, you. you see what I've done. You see my YouTube, uh, my, my, my Instagram stuff. So if you yeah. need an MC to help out, just give me a call. Please give me a call, all right? I will. I'm going to see if I can. Look. I got to admit, this was a longer interview than I thought, which I'm so happy because it was a lot of gems. We had a good amount of people in the chat, about 250 get to watch your story and more views are going to be happening. Look, you are the inspiration. You are the foundation to people that are going to pre be prepared and also positioned to do great things. Swish, 
fan favorite are all great nicknames, but you're the one and only Lakeisha Sutton. Thank you so much for being part of Shots Thank Fired. You. And as I say, before we get out, all I want to know is your name and say the Shots Fired, and then you can get out of here. Hey, what's up? This is Lakeisha Sutton, and it's Shots Fired. Oh, that was great. See, she's ready for films. All right. Look, and I'm good. Hey, South Carolina Gamecock, when you guys do a documentary on Dawn Staley, this is the one right here. Right here. You see her? She is the role. Period. Just put the little wait, freckles. Wait. Shout, out to, shout out to Tiffany Mitchell. She's going to be, I think, the first Gamecock to have her jersey retire in the rafters. November 12th against Maryland. So go Gamecocks. <laughs> go Gamecocks. Thank you so much. You finally get some rest, and we're definitely going to talk because I'm going to start helping you out. All right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate y'all. Later. Peace. All right, look, yo, T Raptor, you in there. That right there is what you call an interview with a specialized journalist. Yeah, I did my research. If you're on the show, I'm gonna dig in your life and find out what's going on. Woo! That was great. All right, we got some people in the chat right now. Thank you guys so much, squad team. Mighty Sands, I see you. Who is still with me on Twitch? We got a good amount of people. T-Raptor has been balling out with us, having some fun. Are you been enjoying the interview? Are you enjoying the show? We got a couple more shows later, and I like the view, so let's keep it going. But anyway, without further ado, let's keep the show going. We got three more segments here on Shots Fired, episode 25. And now we got the NBA 2K, and I know my man from France is ready to go to sleep. So let's get this going. NBA 2K, Shots Fired, let's go. <coughs> oh, that was gross. Ew, I'm sorry. That was a COVID cough. I'm good, though. I'm not good. But anyway, let's get into it right here. As you don't know, let's dive back in the world of esports. My man, Tanzu Akua and Mario, the one and only Ortega Ariza. And if you don't know, these guys were one of the first ever to be a part of the Eve was season one, in which we're trying to get NBA 2K into Olympics, and the man Tanzu from Turkey was actually in Singapore, and we had a great time. Now, I got some pretty cool news. Recently, it was announced that FIBA and ESL Face It group has teamed up for a second season of E-FIBA. Season one was insane, in which 30 teams from around the world were competing in the respectable conference, trying to become that number one spot, but now it's getting bigger, which the national team competition of NBA 2K is now getting even bigger around the world. Now, as the home of the international 2K basketball, the competition with other national federations is a clear esports circuit, and the opportunity to prove themselves in best in the nation MV 2K is here. Now, they're going to get that crown, and from October, season two will tip off with some of the world's elite NBA 2K players representing their countries. This will start the regional qualifiers, then regional finals across FIBA regions of Africa, the Americas, Asia, including Oceania, and Europe. And the top two nations of each player will proceed to the first in-person E-FIBA World Finals in 2023. And I think your man Vince Shang is going to be there. I just see Tanzu is screaming for that. I just got it like that. So anyway, that's where the world's most best national E-FIBA team will be crowned. And I need to be at this. I'm telling you, it's going to be insane. The competition will be played on the PS PS5. And it will feature a 5-on-5 five five formula of the Pro-Am game mode in NBA 2K24. This will also allow players to compete as an organized squad. It will be represented by their own avatars on the virtual court and also represent the country. I just see Morocco flag being waved. Pretty cool, right? I thought so too. The inaugural season of EFL took place earlier this year. And again, 30 teams and nations went all over for six different conferences. Turkey won the EFL finals in Europe, edging out France in three games. Philippines swept Indonesia into Southeast Asia. Morocco won the EFL Africa. And Saudi Arabia picked up the Middle East crown. Puerto Rico was victorious in the North Americas. And South America, Brazil, Argentina faced off in a hot contest with Brazil coming out on top. It was one hell of a series. And the full line of season two is yet to be announced, but we do have the countries and it's going to be announced ever so soon. And stay tuned for all people's socials for that because this sounds awesome and I'll be tuning in for sure. And I'm telling you, when I was a part of eFIBA season one, it was insane. If you want to be part of it, go to eFIBA right now on all social media when it comes to Twitch, Twitter, even Facebook, and you guys should fill the form. I think the deadline is tomorrow i don't know if it's tomorrow but i think we're gonna try and get some more countries i know we have some countries definitely in it and the thing about having an in-person event is gonna be insane if you go onto the olympics nba 2k exhibition match that's when we had an in-person event basically an offline event and yo it was a great turnout in which we had brazil turkey and philippines competing to one day get nba 2k in the olympics all right that's the nba 2k segment thank you guys so much for being part of it now let's go right here to the fiba story 
And I'm really excited for this country because they're about to do their work. But anyway, this right here is the FIBA story for Shots Fire. All right, now let's just get into it right now because I'm telling you, this team is up. You may or may not seen this, but has anyone seen the Bahamas roster lately? Anybody? You, 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 you? Well, guess what? I have, and they look stacked. And yes, it is true because they got some balls that man you don't know from Bahamas. DeAndre uh, A.M. from the Indian Panthers and Buddy Heald from the Charlotte Hornets will also be combined with the one and only Kai Jones have all committed to play in their native Bahamas in the 2024 pre-Olympic qualifiers. But get this, NBA veteran and structure Eric Gordon has also linked up with the Bahamas. But now this is crazy because Gordon has already represented Team USA at the 2010 FIBA World Cup and now he's going to be playing for both nations. I hear you say, how can he do that? With this request, can he switch nations? Well, yes, it was approved by USA Basketball um, and also FIBA. And now he's on the Bahamas, and simple as that. And then four names on this team makes him pretty god darn strong. I mean, DeAndre Ayton spoke about pride playing the nation, saying, look, and I quote, I'm excited to be playing back for, you know, Key Bahamas um, to see how much the program has grown. It's truly a special experience to compete with teammates who are from where you're from, you know, with Bahamas on your chest. That's what I do. Yeah. So straight up right there, Bahama. I'm sold that the Bahamians are going to be dope. And they'll be led by Golden State Warriors assistant coach Chris DeMarco. Now, the roster also includes a handful of U.S. college standouts. Now, the Bahamas has never competed in the Olympics in men's basketball. And this roster is said to be the strongest the country's ever had. You would think that this is their best shot of qualifying, right? Well, guess what? Let's just go down the list. You got Aiden. You got Heald. You got Gordon. You got Jones. Along with the rest of the roster are currently Argentina for the pre-qualifying games. So they're already competing and let's see how that goes because at the end of the day you could be from the islands and still ball out i mean one of the top ones was patrick Hewitt, he was from jamaica but this is crazy now they will compete in group a which has our team will also have cuba and also let's get panama and which of the top two teams advance in semifinals to face the top two teams from group b now Group B also got some decent ballers. And where are they coming from? It features Chile and also Colombia, the Virgin Islands. We know they're virgins. And also <laughs> Uruguay. But remember, this is a pre qualification. Only the tournament winner will advance to the actual Olympic qualifying tournament that will be held in July 2024. And there's a lot on the line here. Ton of pressure for competing. Team Bahamas are currently ranked 56th position in the FIBA World Standings. And it's fair to say that they should rise those racing rankings with that line. Now, Aiton down low. Healed and Gordon splashing from the wings. Damn, baby, that should be fun to watch. And let's see how play our certain will be. And always stay tuned for the FIBA Social's website for updates of those games because now we got some great representation from the islands. And again, the World Cup this year is going to be insane with the buzz, the talent, and also the countries. And I want to know who's going to take it. Let's go. All right. Same here from Kisa. What's up? How you doing, Fernando? I mean, nice to see you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. All right. Now, last but not least, we love this part. This is the worldwide court in which we go all around the world and we highlight usually a country that's really been balling out. So right here, this is worldwide court and shots fired. Let's go. All right. I'm listening to my low fire right now. I'm getting the mood. Mm. Mm. All right. Bring it up, Sasha. Let's get you out of here because. We're doing things a little bit differently for this world segment of the show. And we traditionally go to one place, but with the FIBA World Cup quickly approaching, it tips off on August 25th, if you didn't know, and you should know. Anyway, from this segment, we're going to go through the FIBA's official World Cup Power Rankings, Volume 1. This is Volume 1, so we're going to do a Volume 2 soon. FIBA's list has 32 teams deep, and we don't have the time to do them all. So we're going to go through the top five, all right? Quick and concise, let's go. And here's the thing, I gotta admit, these teams do deserve to go to the World Cup. I mean, all over the world, it's insane, but man, oh man, let's see what's going on. At number five, we have Slovenia. And after the quarterfinals defeat to Poland at the 2022 Euro Basketball, they definitely, now we do have a superstar, 
Many expect this NBA guy named Luka Doncic to lead his nation far this summer. And with the March of his fourth appearance of the World Cup, its best result coming to 2014, where they finished seventh. Now, the one thing I could say is this. One would think that they would definitely improve on this time around because they have been born. Now, number four, we have the Aussies. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. From down under. After reaching the semifinals in 2016, Olympics, and again in 2021, is also at the World Cup in 2019. Many have high expectations for Australia and see them as a legitimate threat. They are ranked third in the FIBA World Rangers and could actually win the medal for this collection summer. Now, also after smiling right there at number three, we got Nando De Cola, Nicolas Betum, and head coach Vincent Collette that are from France. And they have the same core, king, core team that had an amazing tournament in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. France picked up a silver at the Euro Basketball 2022 with a deep roster that could they could better improve on their World Cup. And let's just go right here at number two, Spain. Now, Spain doesn't come to surprise. Two-time World Cup winners in 2026, uh, no, 2006 and 2019 with undoubtedly chance for the title as well. They won it last time and picked up the 2022 Euro Basketball gold along the way. And Spain is a monster of a team knocking down on the number one spot for sure, which you already know what we're going to talk about the number one because there is no no surprise. Number one, Team USA. Look at that. Brandon Ingram right there. It's crazy. Certainly won't come to a surprise of many. They won the tournament in 1954, 86, 9-4, 2010, 2014. And even with their somewhat weaker roster, Team USA still have a host of NBA stars. You saw Brandon Ingram, Paula Banchero, and also some dudes like, I don't know, Tyrese Halliburton. And then we got uh, Mikael Bridges and also Cam Johnson. Now, so the Team USA will be fired up to try and get the gold this summer. Obviously, we didn't have time to cover more, but you know, you check out all the FIBA Full World Cup Power Rangers on their website. Go to the website. That's what I'm trying to get you to go. FIBA.com, baby. Anyway, coaches of the first year of the USA basketball is crazy because I'm really interested in seeing how they're going to play because the president, Grant Hill, just been, you know, right there elected. Also, Steve Kerr will be the head coach. You got Tyrone Lou, um, Erica uh, Spolstra, and also Mark Few on that coaching squad. I'm telling you, that administration is going to be crazy. All right, that's even for so much. Now, we're going to have volume two later, and we'll see if we're all 32 twos will be covered, but be sure, give it a read on who's going to be. All right. Woo, thank you so much. The dangerous man underscore 26 for the follow. We're trying to get to 50,000 followers, and we're halfway there. Again, this has been a very enlightening show, Shots Fire. Thank you so much. It's episode 25. We got a few more episodes left, but the World Cup is here. Please follow FIBA on all social media content. You can follow this show as well here on Twitch and also on YouTube. And also go to the Instagram page and press that follow button. And also shout out to TikTok. We just hear that a lot of FIBA places are getting over a million followers. This is awesome. FIBA 3 x 3 has got a million followers. Shout out to FIBA 3 x 3 But then also, we got to get those followers up on House of Hoops. All right. All y'all have been amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in right here. This is your man, Vince Chang, a.k.a. The Energy. This right here is Shots Fired Season 2, Episode 25. Thank you so much to Lakeisha Sutton, a.k.a. Swish Sutton, a.k.a. Fan Favorite. Shout out to the Big Niger. Nigerian basketball is going crazy. The Bahamians are going to be a problem if we keep watching them because that squad is dope. And again, I can't wait for the World Cup to tip off in a couple of days on the 25th. We'll be back here next week, Wednesday, once again. And hopefully we get the same amount of people to tune in. Again, Jermaine Vince Chang, this has been Shots Fired. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next Wednesday.